for I'd be a slave, I'd be buried in my grave, and go home to my Lord and be free. Destination Freedom. The Chicago Defender and Station WMAQ bring you Destination Freedom, a new radio series dramatizing the great democratic traditions of the Negro people, interwoven in the pageant of history and a part of America's own Destination Freedom. Today, Destination Freedom tells the unique story of Dr. Ulysses Grant Daly and of Dr. Daniel Williams, among the first surgeons to perform successful sutures on the human heart in a chapter entitled, The Heart of George Cotton. I am the human heart. I am the spirit's rhythm. I am a hollow bag the size of your fist. I live in a cavity between two lungs. I am the timekeeper of human life. Fair, impartial, equal to Turk or Tartar, Roman, Greek, Ethiop, Hebrew. I am old. I circulated blood for Cro-Magnons, Neanderthals, Rhodesians, and if in men, I have been the lion and the lamb, the love and the hate. If in men, the good is off interred with their bones, so let it be with my blood. So let it be in my story of the men who mastered me who learn the laws of my veins and lobes, arteries and oracles, who timed my twisting to planet precision, who fought to heal me whenever I was ripped and split, outstretched on a table in the breast of a dying man. Doctor, that's my heart beating like a drum in my ears. It's loud, so loud. Can't you hear it? He's missed him moving, Dr. Daly, but I can't hear him. His heart must be beating, but my stethoscope hardly picks up a sound. Oh, doctor, can't you hear it yet? Can't you? How long has he been here? The ambulance just brought him in. I called you right away. You checked his pulse, respiration temperature. Pulse rapid, ready. 130. Respiration, 30. Temperature, 105. Oh, good Lord. They'd only brought him in sooner. This... This wound goes down to... Uh, oh, wait. I think I found where. Doctor, I'm trying to tell you. It happened the night I got paid. I went out to sit on the beach. To watch the sun rise, some men came up, wanted my money. I hit one, then something hit my chest, dipped in like a pin. I, I... His heart's weakening. There's the needle. Adrenaline quick. Right here, doctor. Let it go, let it go. That'll hold it a while. His heart's been hit. Only one thing we can do. There's nothing you can do. Nothing. Don't let him stir, nurse. Call the emergency staff into the operating room. Find his blood type and get the plasma ready. His heart's split leaking badly. He'll die if he can't sew it up. We've got to operate. No. You can't operate on my heart. Not on my heart. There's one chance in a thousand. If we take it, he may live. No. I'll die. You don't fool me. 
I'll never see the sun rise again. I know it. You hear that, Doctor? I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. Yes, I am the heart, and I speak to you, Doctor. You scrubbing your arms while red sand drips down an hourglass, dusting your hands with powder, flexing your fingers for the rubber glove. Your heart steady. Your mind 40 years away from a town in Texas when you were 18, when your fingers rolled over the keys of a big piano. I've told you not to play that piano. My wife's dead. Let her music rest. Yes, sir. I... I didn't expect you'd come in, sir. If it's still music you want to learn, we can stop your medical lessons. Oh, no. I, I've given up music. I was just practicing to... Put your my... fingers to a better use than waking up a dead woman. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Excuse my gruffness. I had a hard day at the hospital, and I can't get her out of my head. Oh, I'm tired. I'm so tired. I knew you'd be. I finished marking the class papers for you. Would you want to look them over? Yes, yes. What are they? Right here, sir. The final examinations from your surgery students. I've checked them over. Here, Doctor. Hmm. Yeah. Good, good. You've got a fine head on you, boy. Even if you are over curious. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. What would the white supremacists in this town say if they knew I've got a Negro boy not even allowed to enter the medical school? Marking my class papers. <laughs> and the boy named after that Yankee, Ulysses Grant, on top of it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This one's marked right. Uh, here's an odd one, Doctor. Yes? What's odd about it? Well, I, I didn't know how to mark it. This student thinks it's possible to sew up the human heart when the fibers are cut. He thinks you can take the needle and... Operate on the human heart? He's crazy. He drew a diagram, sir. He thinks if the pericardial sac can be reached before it... Begins... I said he's crazy. It can't be done. If it could, wouldn't I have saved her? Didn't I try it after she stabbed herself? Didn't I try it? Yes, doctor. You did. Huh? Not just me. But doctors everywhere. In Germany, Italy, France, Switzerland... All tried for years and failed. It can't be done. Don't you see that? I I see it, sir. But how shall I mark the paper? Zero, zero. Just talking of it makes me hear the way her heart beat that night. I wish to forget it. Daly, look. Yes? You've got nimble fingers and a good head. You know about all I can teach you here. You go north. Beat the race quota. Get into a medical school. Daily, we can heal the kidney, the bladder, the stomach, now everything in the body except the human heart. Like the poet said, the heart's a lonely hunter, and when it's wounded, there's not a chance in a million to heal it. Not a chance in a million. Everything's ready, Dr. Daly. Dr. Shaw, Dr. Hasbrock, Dr. Roberts assisting. Good. Let them look this way. We cut a window in the chest wall above the heart. A half-circle incision this way. 
Every move counts. We can't afford a single slip. Ness, Scalpa. Yes, Doctor. Clamps. Here, Doctor. Well, Clamps. Yes, Doctor. Sponge. Yes, Doctor. Here, Doctor. A single slip, and I stop. To you, I speak. Knife. With your body bent over a table Please. under the glare of a white light, concentrated on a six-inch Clamps. half circle. Your mind, following the meaning of the words you spoke decades back, in a college hall, when you took an ancient oath. Repeat after me, I, Ulysses Grant Daly. I, Ulysses Grant Daly. Swear by Apollo, physician, by Aesculapius, by health, by panacea, and by all the gods and goddesses. Swear by Apollo, physician, by Aesculapius, by health, by panacea, and all the gods and goddesses. Making them my witnesses that I will carry out this oath and this indenture. Making them my witnesses that I will carry out this oath and this indenture. To use treatment to help the sick according to my ability and judgment but never with a view to injury and wrongdoing. To use treatment to help the sick according to my ability and judgment, but never with a view to injury and wrongdoing. In whatever house I enter, I shall enter to help the sick, and I shall abstain from all intentional wrongdoing and harm. In whatever house... He took an oath. And carried it out to the letter. And so he went out to heal the heartbeats of the world, to look into hospitals across the country, and to knock on any door to enter the house of the sick. Who are you? What do you want? I'm Dr. Daly, ma'am. I'm over at the hospital. They told me your husband had an accident on the job. Sharp hit his chest. Did they tell you that there's no hope for him? Did they tell you none of the doctors could do anything? They sent me over. Go back where you come from. Let my husband die in peace, please. Let me see. If there's a chance. There's no chance. Now go, please. Come in, then. Thank you. He's lying on the pallet. Over there. Thank you. Did you hold my back? Let me get the stethoscope. There. They were right. His eyes. Pupils dilated. It's no use, I said. There is use. Let me take him to the hospital. Let me try. If we get him there in time, if we can work quick, very quickly. We'll what can to... you do that the Savior can't do? I don't know, ma'am. All I know is that hundreds, thousands of men die this way. Well, there must be some way. Some way of patching up their hearts. I know... I'm a young doctor, very young. But there must be a way of helping the heart to beat, even when the cords are cut. I'll find that way, ma'am. I'll find that way. You went across the sea, learning my laws, in Paris, in Rome, standing by under the white lights, while I lay stretched out upon a table, watching the masters try to heal me in Paris. devient plus en plus fibreux, Dr. Daly. Infirmière, avez-vous dressé la transfusion? Oui, docteur. Des crampons. Encore. Oui, docteur. Son cœur commence à s'évanouir. L'adrénaline, la guille, vite. C'est prêt. Son cœur devient plus faible. Trouvez une veine et passez-moi l'adrénaline tout de suite. Je vois maintenant, c'est fini. C'est fini, c'est trop tard. La palpitation cesse. Nous y étions très loin. Vous pouvez voir vous-même, Dr. Daly, c'est impossible. Impossible. Confiteor Deo Omnipotenti, Beate Maria Semper Virgini, Beato Michaele Archangelo, Beato Ioanne Battiste, 
Sanctis Apostolis, Petro Ora Gaveta. Siamo quasi al cuore. Infermiera, gli incastri. Sì, dottore. Spero che possiamo giungere il cuore a tempo. È molto debole. La spugna adesso. Eccolo, dottore. Ci siamo. Ecco il cuore. Ora un albo, infermiera. Quello lungo. Sì, dottore. Bene. Vediamo se posso cucirlo in nazi. Che cade insieme. Sì, dottore. Santo Apostolo, Petro e Paolo. Omne santo e sa patra orar pro me ad dominum deum nostrum. Dottore! Amen. Yes, in a cottage in Milan I stopped. Everywhere I stopped when I was wounded. And he went to Berlin to learn more, to work. While on a dark street in Chicago, other men went to work on me. I was in George Cotton... I was walking home with my wife. George. Yeah, yeah, Mabel? Don't look now, but two men back there firing. Ah, you're just uneasy because it's dark around here. Every night we come by here, it's always the same old story. George, I don't look now, but two men... Are George, just... they're coming up here. They're running this way. Look. Hey, you two, hold up there. Run up, we'll throw a bullet in your back. Uh, Put up your hands. Uh, what's this? Hey, you take your hands off me. George, don't he's got a knife. Man, I got my fist. Take you, smart guy. George, watch out. Watch out. George, George, he stabbed you. Help. Shut up, Lefty. Shut up. Let me fucks before the cops come. Well, go on. What are you waiting for? He, he looks like he's dead. No, wait. That's shocking. I only stabbed him in the heart. You're too quick with that knife, I told you. Rifle his pockets and stop preaching. I can't hold this woman all night. Okay, Lefty, okay. Oh, of all the lousy luck, ten bucks is all he had. You're lying. No, Lefty, honest. I crossed my heart. I'll cut out your heart. Come across. Honest, Lefty, you know me. I wouldn't lie to you. Shut up, shut up. Well, I'll be dog. Two more dead presidents stuck in my hand. What do you know about that? I know you're a liar. But we got to get out of here. What do we do with the old lady? She knows what's good for her. She'll keep quiet. Take her old man to the morgue. There's a real good sawbones up at the hospital there, lady. Dr. Dan Williams. He helped me Stop when I... you fool and pick up your feet. Huh? Okay. Go, go, get going. Oh, George. George. You're not dead. Oh, George, no. I can still hear your heart. A little. Just a little. It's still beating. Oh, Lord, let it keep on till I can get into the hospital. Let it keep beating until I can get a doctor. Somewhere. Somewhere there must be a doctor who can help you. There must be one somewhere. Um der deutschen Herzgesellschaft zu willen, möchte ich meine amerikanischen Kollegen willkommen heißen. Meine Herren, Sie sind alle frei, Ihre Untersuchungen in Berlin und anderswo in Deutschland fortzusetzen. Meine Herren, ich danke Ihnen. Or, as you say in English, I welcome you doctors to Berlin to do your research on heart surgery. <lacht> Thank you. Thank you, Professor Gerhardt. Uh, your chief of the heart specialists here, I understand. We'd like to hear of your work. Why, I, I wanted to ask you. I heard that in America you have had successful heart operations. Successful? You hear that? <laughs> <laughs> sure, we've had plenty successful heart operations, Professor. Only the patients died. <laughs> oh, well, now I... Uh, <laughs> professor, uh, Professor, I understand you German doctors are coming pretty close to finding a way to suture the heart. Is that right? Well, I was about to say, it has been done. Well, I'd sure like to study under the man who's done that. Oh, I, I did not mean here. I, I meant in America. I read that in Chicago. Chicago? I forgot. Herr Doctors, there is an American doctor in the next room... He's on the staff of Eichelberger Clinic. I invented, I invited him over here to join us. Is that right? Uh, we'd be delighted to have him, Professor. Well, the more the merrier. Maybe he'd like to join the society. Bring him in. Sure. Uh, right, uh, him uh, right away, Herr Doctor. Right, right away. Right. He's, He's just, just in the other room. Out here. Just yes, in here. Uh, here, right. here, Herr Doctor. This is Dr. Daly. Good evening, gentlemen. 
Oh, I didn't mean to interrupt. The professor said some of my fellow countrymen wanted me to join them. Uh, yeah, yeah, Herr Doctor. Uh, here, sit here by Dr. Martin. Just a minute, Professor. I, I think you've brought your friend to the wrong place. Wrong place? This society is for doctors. Well, he, he is a doctor. He's not a white doctor, Professor. The society accepts only white doctors. Well, is not a doctor a doctor? Can't you understand? Well, I I never heard of such a thing. I'll, I... I'll explain it to you, Professor. He means, insofar as his society is concerned, what science proves about the equality of peoples just make believe. He believes there's a master race, and he belongs to it. His field is for the few, not the many. He has a disease harder to cure than a heart wound. I'll join you in class here, Professor, in the morning. This is outrageous. But I tell you, he is one of the best doctors in Berlin. I have noticed his word. But didn't you notice his color? Color? Yeah. Yeah, I did. He is the same color as the man I was going to tell you about in America, Dr. Daniel Williams. Uh, the news just come over the wire. Two weeks ago, July 10th, 1893, Dr. Williams completed one of the first successful operations on the human heart. The patient was George Cotton. And her doctors, the patient lived. Yes, daily, the patient lived. George Cotton got up and walked in two weeks. So, you want to work as my assistant. What can I teach you? You don't already know, but this. Maybe someday you'll have cases exactly like mine. This Cotton. They brought him in one night, stabbed by thugs. His heart struggling to beat. At first, it was so faint, the stethoscope couldn't pick it up. I searched, and then I found it. I tell you, there may be sounds more beautiful than a human heartbeat, but I've never heard them. I took him into Providence Hospital, two in the morning. Uh, no time for a big staff, fancy equipment. I had to work fast. Then, with these hands, I took out his heart and stitched it six times. I did it for one patient, and I did it for another. And this I learned. Now, follow this closely. Yes, Dr. Williams. This heart. This human heart is not just a delicate thing, but it's also tough and strong. It'll stand just so much pressure when you're going to handle it. It's the little things that you do that'll make the difference between life and death. Now, you remember this when you're calling for your scalpels, sponges, sutures, clamps. Clamps. You cannot give the patient much anesthesia. He's too weak to stand it. You can have his eyes open, watching and waiting. Cut your window over the fourth rib Sponge. and tie off the vessels. Ready. When you lift the window, you'll see the heart. Clamp. Here. It's like a slippery fish. Clamp two. It rises, twists, and struggles like Clamp. it's trying to break free. Ready. Take the stitches in between the heartbeats. Clamp. And if the stitches hold Ready. back the flow, you've Clamp. got a chance. Yes, but remember, keep in rhythm with a heartbeat. Ready. Keep in rhythm. Never break that rhythm. Now, it's ready. We'll lift up the window. Steady. Easy now. Easy. Doctor, what are you taking off me? Doctor. There. It's off. The heart. Look at it. Fry. Twist. Doctor. Oh, doctor. Keep checking his respiration. Transfusion ready. It's on the rack, Doctor. I, I feel so... so weak, Doctor. So weak. Pressure. He, he's gasping. He's weak. Got to get on. Ready to lift the heart. Lift it out of the body. Not too much pressure. Keep in rhythm with the heartbeat. Doctor... Everything's going round and round. A little more. There. Now it's out. Now, to hold. 
hold it in my left hand. Blood leaking out. Not much time. There's needle, curved needle. Right here. Fine silk. It's threaded. Ready. All right. If the stitches hold, three stitches should stop the leak. Pressure. It's gone down. His heart's hardly beating. I'm falling. Falling. Falling, doctor. Adrenaline, quick. Adrenaline. I've got it, doctor. Okay, the vein in his arm, hurry. I'm I'm trying to, doctor. But his nerves have collapsed. I can't find it. Take a scalpel. Cut down. Make a cut down. Take one. Uh, I've got it, doctor. Shoot it in. Good. Transfusion set. Yes, doctor. Let the blood flow into him. There. It's holding. Give him more. Let it go free. It's going in. The beat's picking up. Good. Good. Assistant, clean the incision. Sprinkle sulfur. Take off the clamp. Throw up the vessel. We've won. He'll make it. I did make it. I am the human heart, a hollow bag the size of your fist. When I was wounded, these are some of the men who first healed my wounds. You have just heard Destination Freedom's dramatization of the story of Dr. Ulysses Grant Daly and Dr. Daniel Williams, among the first of the world surgeons to devise a successful method for heart sutures. Destination Freedom is Richard by, written by Richard Durham and produced under the direction of Homer Heck. <laughs> Dr. Bailey was played by Fred Pinkard. Others were Larry Alexander, Oscar Brown, Jr., Donald Gallagher, Janice Kingslow, Kurt Kupfer, William Nix, Tony Parrish, Arthur Peterson, and Dorothy Van Zandt. Greg Pascal was the singer. The special music was written by Emil Soderstrom and was played by Elwin Owen and Bobby Christian. This is Charles Chan inviting you to be with us again next week for another in our series of The Negro in Democracy, Destination Freedom. <laughs> This is WMAQ, NBC in Chicago.